What's it going to be like for calculus starting next, I guess, later this week? Where I'm not doing it for you, but you can write all over it and do your own examples. Now, I'm sure the next question is, yeah, but what if you weren't exactly one standard deviation above or one standard deviation below? However many standard deviations you are above or below, that's called your z-score. Um, and that's what all we're going to be doing in Chapter 5, is figuring out how to estimate with normal distributions, not whole numbers, but any number of standard deviations above or below. Chebyshev's theorem, which is a ridiculous sounding thing, Chebby. Chev. Everybody say it. Chebychev. 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 Chebychev's theorem says that uh, this is for any data set, so not just normal. So not just for normal data, for any data set. Although I think this one's kind of a bogus theorem because it says at least and then it like is just ridiculous. So it's at least uh, that much is in between the two things. So do you remember for a bell curve between um, one standard deviation, there was 68%? And here they're saying within two standard deviations, with a bell curve, it's 95%. They're saying at least 75% of the data has to lie within the mean. It's basically, you use this formula, the 1 minus 1 over k squared, and k is the number of standard deviations. So what if you had any kind of data, didn't have to be a bell curve, any set of data, how many of them would be within four standard deviations of the mean? What would you do? One minus one sixteenth. One minus one sixteenth or fifteen sixteenths would be within four standard deviations of the mean. Um, so this is how an example like this would look on an AP test. They would say the age distribution of people in Alaska. Can you tell me why people in Alaska's age distribution is, is not a bell curve? Probably not in Lewiston either. Because what? Well, I'm talking about the ages of people. It doesn't talk about how many there are, right? That's right. And if you go to Florida, you're going to have an overrepresentation of people over 60 because people who are over 60 like to retire to Florida, especially in certain communities. I'd say in this community, um, there's probably a lot more older people than younger people. Um, and I can tell that because the numbers in our schools are dwindling and not just because people are taking their kids elsewhere, but because people, they don't have new houses in here, we don't have any new housing for people to move into, and people tend to stay in Lewiston. I mean, like, look at all the farmers here, and then the farmers have children, and their children get out of school, but the farmers are still staying, you know what I mean? So there's no free land, no new place for people to move in. So as a whole, the Lewiston community is aging older than a lot of younger communities, and it's probably not so much a bell curve. So Alaska, same thing. The mean is 35.3. And look how huge this standard deviation is. Look at this. 21.1. So if you use the statement about the data using Chebyshev's theorem and k equals 1. Oh, uh, we can't use k equals 1. That's the only one you can't use because it's 1 over 1. So let's say, let's try 1.5 deviations. All right, 1.5 deviations above the mean. Everybody write 1.5. The formula on the back page says 1 minus 1 over k squared, or 1.5 squared. So everybody put that in your calculator. Take 1 minus 1 divided by 1.5 squared. This actually, you don't need any parentheses. It'll do it itself because it's going to square first, then divide, then subtract. I got, 
about 56%. You guys get the same thing? So I'd write 50%, I'd write at least, at least 56% of the people in Alaska are, and then I'd subtract 1.5 of these from it. So I'm going to take 35.3 and subtract uh, 1.5 times 21.1 between, so basically between four years old, I got 3.65. And then I'm going to do the exact same equation, only I'm going to add 1.5 times the standard deviation and 67 years old. Definitely more than 56% of the people in Alaska are between those two, but this is guaranteed. <clears throat> All right, next we're talking about box and whisker plots. All right, we need some data. Let's see, what should we talk about today? How about how many pets you've had in your lifetime? Can you count them up? If they had a name, yes. If they have a name, they count. That's a pet. If a fish doesn't have a name, that's a decoration that moves and breathes. Same thing with cattle. If you have cattle like a farm, if you've named them and kept them, at least for long periods of time, that's a pet. If it's number 32. Yeah, but if there's an emotional bond there. Between number 32 and you? Yeah. Are you still going to kill number 32? Eventually. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you decide. I think I'm at 16. How about you, Nathan? Zero? Oh, honey. Somebody allergic at your house or you don't like pets? Sucks. If you want a cat. If you hate cats, it's great. Great news. Justin? We're still counting. Georgia? 22. 